Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. As promised at the start of this year that I would be recording a series of videos where I'll share with you my knowledge of fluid mechanics. Most of you would already be aware that there are like thousands of videos on the internet that talks on this subject and I'm guessing that many of them would be more informational and rigorous than I could come up with. But what I've observed is that the traditional approach of classroom teaching, where the emphasis is more on delivering the theoretical concepts and the approach that involves demonstrations and experiments, where learning comes through experience. Uh, these two approaches are usually not clubbed together in many of these videos. So these series of videos would be my effort to present you with an approach that combines uh, these two methods, where the content is a mixture of both of these technologies. So I hope that uh, the, these series of videos would give you a better grasp and understanding on the subject matter. And to ensure that you are aware about when the new videos are released, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel and have enabled the notifications. The subject is very fascinating as you will be seeing later down the line and it comes under the broad umbrella of engineering mechanics with the other half being the solid mechanics. At this point, one can ask the question, what exactly is the difference between a solid and a fluid? And therefore, what technicality is the definition of the fluid? And this is something that we would address in the lecture today. So without wasting any further time, let's get started. In order to answer these questions, let's try to ask ourselves a more general question. Are solids and fluids also a part of something? The answer to that question is yes. Matter occurs commonly in three states, as you might already be knowing that, which is solids, liquids, and gases. And when we think of fluids, we are actually talking about liquids and gases. So solids form one of the major states of matter. Some of the common examples of solids are iron, rock, glass, and so on. Whereas for liquids, we have water and for gases, we have air. So what exactly is the distinct factor between these two? That is for solids and fluids. One can answer these questions from the attractive forces that the molecules experience within these materials. And the attractive forces within a solid far exceed than those of fluids, which is liquids and gas. Therefore, a ball and a glass of water, when thrown in the air, reacts very differently. The molecules in the ball are packed together very tightly and it prevents it from falling apart like the glass of water does. And this leads to the definition that the solids have a definite shape, whereas the fluids do not. In the case of liquids, they tend to take up the shape of the container they are contained into. For example, if you put a glass of water into a pot of water or a beaker, it would assume the shape of the pot or the beaker. So this definition holds up very well for the liquids, whereas for the gases, they usually take up the entire volume of the container and they are not restricted by it. This is because the intermolecular forces that occur within the gas, that is between the gas molecules, they are much smaller and the distance between each molecules is much larger. So if you imagine yourself sitting in a room with a bunch of other people and one of them end up releasing a gas from their backside, do you really think that the gas doesn't spread out? It does, right? There is one more way to explore the differentiation between the solids and the fluids and that is by the idea of a deforming force or a deforming shear stress. Fundamentally, what this means is if we try to change the shape of a material by the application of a force, the solids and the fluids, they behave very differently. Fluids are said to be those substances that deform irrespective of how small that force is and they would keep deforming as long as we'll apply that force and for that reason fluids are those substances that tends to flow and by the word flow it means they undergo this continuous deformation process. For example, if you fill a small cup of water to the brim and blow over it, notice how the surface of the water moves but 
the container that is contained into doesn't bulge right they are going to withstand these shear stresses up to a certain point before experiencing any deformation and also uh, once they are deformed they do have the capability to retain their original shape or to come back to their original shape as long as they are deformed within the elastic limit on the other hand if the fluid is deformed it cannot go back to its initial state on its own there has to be another shearing action in the opposite direction in order for a fluid to go back to its original state However, sometimes this kind of distinction could be quite patchy because there are some substances that exhibit a dual nature. For example, if we consider paints, they are usually applied on the walls in a liquid form. This is because of the distortion that it experiences. But if we leave a bucket of paint for a while, it ends up being like an elastic solid. Some jellies and polymer solutions are also examples of uh, these substances which may not be very accurately described as a solid or a fluid and they sort of lie on the border between these two states of matter. Therefore, to sum up, fluid mechanics is that branch of science which deals with the motion of fluids and when we say fluids, we are talking about gases and liquids. Uh, now before concluding the video, I'd like to share with you one of the properties of a fluid that you would already be familiar with and that is density. So fundamentally, density is defined as mass per unit volume. That is, if we take a fixed amount of volume, how much mass or how much matter is contained into that volume would be called as density. So a fluid with a higher density, such as honey, would have a higher mass content or higher matter content for the same volume compared to a lower density fluid such as water. Another important point to note here is that the density of the substance would not change whether you have taken this much or that much sample for your testing as long as both of these samples satisfied the continuum assumption which we are going to talk about in a later video. And for that reason density is called as an intensive property that is it is independent of the matter that is it is independent of the sample. Whereas if you will talk about mass and volume, they are going to depend upon whether you have taken a spoonful of water or a glass of water. The SI unit of density is the units of mass divided by the units of volume, which becomes kg per meter cube. And sometimes it is also expressed in gram per cc. Another property that goes hand in hand with the density is called as a specific gravity, which is defined as the density of the substance which we are interested in versus the density of a reference material at some reference conditions. In case of liquids, this reference material is water at 4 degrees centigrade, which has a density of 1000 kg per meter cube or 1 gram per cc. Whereas for the cases of gases, this reference material is dry air, which has a density of approximately 1.2 kg per meter cube. Some engineers prefer to use the specific gravity as compared to density. My guess is it might be because the numbers tend to look relatively smaller. Let me know down in the comments which would you prefer. In the context of liquids, the fascinating part with the specific gravity is that any substance with a specific gravity of less than 1 would tend to float as compared to a substance which has a specific gravity of greater than 1 which would end up sinking. So for instance, uh, this mineral oil which has a specific gravity of less than 1, uh, it floats on the surface of water. Whereas seawater or salt water is a great example of a liquid which has a specific gravity of greater than one and it is very abundant on this planet earth. What do you think the specific gravity of a human body is? Let me know down in the comments. If you think this video was helpful and you learned something, do give a thumbs up. A small token of appreciation comes a long way for content creators like us. Until the next video which I hope would be released soon. Take care. I would see you in the next one. Bye-bye.